bites a Fnatic here off the bat. That's for Fnatic's last pick. If it is going to be a support Naga, they are still looking for that offlane selection for a higher Broodmother is still an option. And Ten you. seconds remaining. It's, it's, it's good here, though. There's it a Spirit Breaker here. charge, but by no means is that... You Five don't say, like, remain. oh, they've got Spirit Breaker. Brood's unpickable. No, 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 no. This is, this is a, looking like a good Brood game. They if, do want a space creator. Even though Brood maybe, generally farms, she, yeah, she, makes, she opens up the map for these two. Uh, it's a slightly on the... Not necessarily greedy, but gives you a third farm dependent hero with Queen of Pain and Shadow Fiend, but... As far as offlaners, there's, there's an Axe out there, Centaur, some less commonly played initiators. The, the go-tos, the Clock, the Tusk, the Shaker are gone, though. So you, you got to think outside the box here if you want that type of hero. Yeah. So see what the Fnatic's last band's going to be in there. Got to be thinking about the mid lane. If there's a TA mentioned as a possibility, otherwise uh, what, we'll have to see what kind of QO options are out there. Razor? Okay, that makes Dire sense. The Razor, the Razor and the Viper are two, which are just strong, stable mids, but the question is whether or not... That, it's not really a QO style of mid, mid hero. Hmm. Ember Spirit? Storm. He used to play a lot of Ember Storm. Spirit. Storm, maybe. You are up against the Lion. Remaining. Yeah, I, I could see Storm being a possibility. It's at least... Uh... Ember doesn't do well against Shadow Fiend, but if you want to support him Radiant a lot, then that's a possibility. I feel like it's likely to be one of those two at this point. And there's the Brute Band, so no, no shenanigans this game from Ohio. I would love to see that old in Ohio's Nature's Prophet. I don't think it fits here at all, <laughs> but... That was always fun to see. Against Spirit Breaker, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I haven't got two. Oh, they've got a decent amount of reserve time left, so they can think through their options here Ten as far as what they want to do. And they, they could consider the Kornaga if they really wanted to. Five seconds but remaining. It's so greedy. Yeah. You've got three heroes that are literally Earth like vacuum time. cleaners. Yeah, yeah, let's say Earthshaker could be a possibility. That's a really non. Like you've got Queen of Pain SF, you've got enough. You, like you can pick a kind of more utility offlaner. Like you could have like the Yoki style Sand King even. But yeah, I'm feeling like Sand King, Axe, or Centaur. Those are the, the three that come to mind. A less conventional, what do you have? Legion Commander. Themes also on the greedy side and just yeah. not that strong right now in general. And we'll find out soon enough. The offlane Riki. <laughs> that Mushi is known for uh, for banning first phase. Centaur. There's so. a Centaur. Ohio Dire plays a lot of Centaur, pick. and this is something he's... Right. Ember or at. Storm, I'm expecting here. No TA? No TA possible? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they have so much control for TA this game. But it is... It is. The same can be said. That, 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 that applies against a Storm, too, I feel. Or at least. Uh, less so. Lina. Only the Hex, really. Lina. 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 Okay. okay. That's something we mentioned Lina earlier, but... Kind of got drawn away from. And hey, it worked for their brothers in MVP Hot 6 yesterday. Let's see. Give some... Maybe some damage output that they were lacking. Like, they've got a really good team fight around the Tombstone. It's just going to be all about securing those kills. And Gyrocopter... Doesn't want to go running in too deep until he has that BKB. Fighting into Lion Disables, Finger, Queen of Pain Burst, SF Burst. They want to have that long-range DPS, which Lina can provide them. I, I really love these MVP lanes. I feel like they should be super strong through the first six to eight minutes here. Centaur, not strong in the laning stage. Certainly not going to do well against Gyro. Shadow Fiend can be punished by Lina 1v1, let alone if he gets charged. And even in the safe lane... Sure, Queen of Pain's a good laner, but remaining. you gotta worry about the charge, the tombstone, maybe even the dazzle is moving through that lane at some Five point for Fetty. Remaining. They have potential here, gods, for MVP. Who win all three lanes if they play this right. Yeah. And they're going aggro. KP's already got the reign of protection and he's running bottom, it looks like. Prepare Very powerful heroes. I, I, I like what MVP Phoenix are pulling out here. Early ward can be planted by a high up top though. He TP'd for this and everything, so didn't even spend all his money, just wanted to get up as fast as possible and not, he's not going to actually block the pull, but also just to try and figure out what MVP are going to be doing with their lanes, if it is going to be this aggro trial lane. But That's a good point, and it's, it's very important intel, given that they have so many options. They can run some dual lanes, they can go aggro try. Just endless possibilities, really. But with that, we get underway. Could have a big level 1 clash. Okay, well, XY is blink already. He's a little bit of trouble. They can charge him, but they have to be careful about what's lurking behind. Just chucking out a decay. Yeah. And he blinks to it. If he gets charged, he can just blink to the tower as well. So 
They get the scouting information. Uh, you, 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 are not, you are not fighting this if you're fanatic. No, no. Just, they're just playing footsies, but they're not going anywhere near this. They're group. hoping for vision. Center actually rotating down as well. We'll have to see if they look to change their lanes. I, I think even 4v5 MVP can't fight this unless they just someone gets oh. caught really out of position. They're getting free hits off on Febby. Oh, that's the four heroes done. That might be the opportunity there for the charge the other direction. Febby almost dead. The backstab. Ohio does club him with the axe. He gets the kill, but Nuts looks for the trade. That's a two hero raise. How the hell is Fnatic winning this fight? KP trying to do what he can with the rocket barrage is not quite enough, but Nuts is clobbering everyone. Queen of Pain blinking away, but March on the hunt. He gives up on the charge. Two for two, but a first blood for, for uh, oh, actually MVP got oh, it. Oh, still barely. in trouble. And he wanted the bounty yes. room. He's just going to run in and feed for that. That was not worth it. Oh. Well, uh, MVP actually got the first blood, as it turns out. I thought it went the way of Fnatic there. But, uh, oh, no. Did who got it? It was it was Fnatic. It was oh, the, the centaur. It's, it, it said the gold swing went the other way. I'm not really sure why. So... Really, I mean, it, it MVP definitely the stronger level one fight, but Fnatic just kind of slightly outplayed them. They got some free right clicks off on the Dazzle. They hit a four hero Riptide with Naga Siren, a two hero Impel. They were the ones getting the oh, jump and initiating. It was more than a two hero Impel. It was three or four. That yeah, was. It was. They, it they was just huge. they just got caught in this like little choke point. I feel like if they just ran at Fnatic, they would have been the ones to crush that fight. But mm -hmm. the the backstab Centaur first blood is not something you expect. That's for sure. So, I, Fnatic can kind of stabilize off of this, and for them, I think they now can read the lanes well, they deal with their pool camp as well, they saw where the Observer Ward went down, so their safe lane will go really well here. Even though they're against the Spirit Breaker and Dying, they can use the pool camp, deny as much XP as possible, get farm, get some CS as well as some levels on their supports, and then go for kills once they get like a level 2, level 3 on the Lion and Naga Siren, and go from there. And Mushi already has his bottle, he did rush it here. Got a CS pretty well against QO off the bat. Picking some heavy slave harass, but able to bottle his way through it. Even going in on QO, getting some free chops. Not something you generally want to allow. There's no mana after that skirmish, so no early charge available. The Riptide connecting on two. And the support Naga seems pretty strong against this dual lane. Two melee heroes, they want, they want to be in your face, and you're pretty much guaranteed, guaranteed to hit both with the Riptide. As Febby, true to Febby form, is going for a courier snipe, and it's leading with an empty bottle. This is a courier for Febby. Give him Lady's another one. And that's a killed. dead bottle and a sad Mushi. You know, they were on point last game, ready for it, and micro the courier around, but Fnatic maybe just forgetting about it and getting a little overconfident. He even gets the Darun deny as well. And now he's getting some harass too. Febby's just spanking Mushi. Kuo's running and Kuo's gonna get time. him. He doesn't even have boots yet. This is an easy takedown with the slave follow-up. Mushi's gonna pop. Well, he gets a free heal, gods. But that's about it. <laughs> Oh, you want you want your bottle for some heals here? Just go back to base. That are t that's two very quick deaths for Mushi. The the first one especially avoidable. Well, not the start you're hoping for from a Shadow Fiend. Yep. So Mushi gonna have to be playing much more cautiously at this point here, and he, he'll TP back. Mushi very experienced and not someone who's just gonna go on tilt like maybe we've seen QO do throughout this tournament. He's just gonna come back, play defensively. Try and farm up his basic, just core tanky items, be it treads, aquila, and uh, just deal with. There's not going to be any kind of support rotations from Febby anymore. He's a dazzle. He's just going to look to secure the safe lane for uh, KP's gyrocopter. He's going to pull, look to get some levels himself. So things should stabilize mid for Mushi, although he does need to be careful of Cure's solo kill potential at level six. Mushi did buy his boots before dying, so at least he has those when he walks back to lane. Uh, and he will have the bottle in relatively short order. Only a minute to go before that will be available to him. Has to survive this small window and, you know, with the free Radiant's fountain trip from the death, he, he has a decent amount of mana yep. still to go. Yeah, and the one threat to him is always going to be the, the charge from March, which for now it looks like you've already got the support to actually lurking around, protecting they him, they slash need, going for a kill. They definitely want to have someone here if bottom lane's missing. But two means offense. Fnatic are oh, looking they, for the jump. They're going to run through the mid lane. They know that the rune just spawned and Lena was headed towards bottom to go grab it. So they get in a good position to get this flank and go for a kill on QO. QO did meanwhile go bottom and he grabbed the bounty rune, activates it.
Oh. He's in a dangerous spot here, and he's running up the river into Kachikemba, who they have grabbed to the notice. Invis. He picked, the, he picked up the, the Invis room at missing under an Observer Ward, and QO not oh. reacting. Yeah, now he is, but <laughs> too late. Oh, well, <laughs> reacting to two heroes on top of him. <laughs> that was maybe just a bit negligent as far as like watching what was happening, because they, they left the Invis room there for the Lena, and it, I mean, it disappeared. <laughs> You've got you've that the only explanation there is that it's a smoke hero who picked up a rune. Or an or an in, already invis hero, but there's no, nothing no one on Fnatic who has Shadow Walk or anything. It was pretty funny. The centaur walks over the rune, he's like, I'll leave it. And then, <laughs> then the Dazzle does the same and Ebby says, Okay, you can have it, Lena, and then nobody watches the rune. Yeah. <laughs> they get that on the line and end up getting the kill. Well, that's gonna slow down this mid lane. QO almost level six though, and it's where Mushi has to be extremely careful. Level 3 Dragon Slave, 250 damage with the Laguna. You're looking at 700 before reduction. So if Mushi doesn't have full health, you just have to slave Laguna and he's basically dead. He, this is where you have to play very cautiously in this match. His crew is respawned, so he'll pick up his wand and even the headdress there. So he gets some extra stats from all these little items. So he's looking to boost up that HP so he can survive this combo. March is annoyed. He just tried to charge mid. Immediately the net from Johnny comes out, cancels the charge, but they're still fighting in the mid lane where Kachik Emba found the stun, takes Easy. down nuts on the tower dive. If that charge wasn't interrupted, that's a completely different engagement because they have a two hero stun most likely and at the very least they locked on the Shadow Fiend and pick him off. Just great calculated play too. They have that observer, they see it, but now he comes charge. Oh uh, March not to be deterred by one stop charge. He goes for the second. That one works. They were XY though on the rotation has the blink scream ultimate. QO's here with the stun, he whiffs oh, it, no. and no mana for the ultimate game by XY, man, of dying to this, the charge not necessary, March ends up committing for it, but he's the tanky one who can survive this QO, Just quickly moves away as the gyrocopter rotates in, this is where gyro gets out of hand, a frantic stampede, Kachikama runs back and tries to take down QO, and sacrifices himself for nada, a triple freely fed to QO. And all of a sudden, the game opens up like a can for MVP. That, so many of those kills were just free as well, like you said. Like the, the Queen of Pain trying to just man fight the Lena there and just end up going down. And then similar story with the Lion running back in. Then it was the Centaur who stampeded all, and went for the Lena as well. Like they killed, they get the one kill in the Spirit Break and then he stampedes and like, oh, I'm going to go for the Lena, but he's got a full damage rocket barrage on him. He could not hold on. Like He wasn't running away from the Gyrocopter. He was running towards the Lena while standing next to the Gyrocopter and just, whew, bottom lane now, March. He's gone in for some kills here, Johnny. Zombie. Doing work, another decay wow. point out. One second, should have Johnny does spend his gold and drops to the decay. Meanwhile, they're diving the tower. Now March rotate his KOX by blinks to the north, looks for the retreat. There's the Nether Strike. Laguna disintegrates him, and that's another pair of kills. Gods, you know, casting Fnatic, and I think you met, you called them. You actually called. IG, I believe it was, the Cloud9 of the Asian scene, where one game they're amazing, the Radiant next game you just don't know what's going on with the team. Radiant I kind of feel the same way about Fnatic at times. One game they're beating Secret and just Radiant wrecking them, Radiant even from the laning stage onwards, and the next game they're self-destructing for minute one. Yeah, this is being just that. I, I feel like MVP has played well. It's been good rotations, especially from March, importantly on the Spirit Break, and QO's had a really good performance on the leader, knowing when to fight, but it's been punishing mistakes, mistakes that shouldn't have happened for Ohio. Does stab the stampede at the ready. He's able to sc scurry away Dyer's from this north lane, but still takes a pounding. They're going to keep on pressing in now with Febby joining up with KP. Your charge, it's time to rotate on mid. Mushi, if he doesn't back off immediately, oh, he's in danger. Top. This charge is about to connect. They have the stun available. Don't have a Laguna for a little bit longer. He starts with a slave. Then he tries to follow up with the stun. It's a complete airball. QO got the order of operations wrong. Doesn't get the kill. If he stuns first there, that goes a bit differently. Yeah, and Fnatic were going for a smoke top while that was happening, which they didn't really find anything with. They were for, well, four sacks, he abandoned Johnny from the smoke king, TP a mid defensively, so. KP may be the target, though. Oh, there is a finger. Could have gone for him, but didn't quite have the range. Ooh, 15 kills in nine minutes, but it, it feels like more. A lot of aggression, and uh, to me, the big loser so far has been the Shadow Fiend of Mushi, who has already racked up three deaths, hasn't really gotten to jungle a whole lot. His CS is underwhelming at this point for a Shadow Fiend, and he's just been kept down in general. Not all his fault. I, they have put a lot of pressure on him, but it's working. 
Mushi is still kind of on par with Vaughn. The, the bigger loser to me, Queen of Pain. This is a 2k net worth Queen of Pain from the safe lane. KYXY had uh -oh. the safe lane with support. His rotations have been disastrous. He's had two deaths. Well, the first one rotation mid, and then there was the time where he, after he respawned, he TP bottom and died again. Stun finger on the march versus the tombstone. They have no, they already used the soul rip. Not very strong here in this particular engagement, but Mushi dies once more, soloed by QO in the mid lane. Uh, that's definitely worth it around the map, though. Not ideal. Looks like it was a close call, but that gives QO a completed Yule attack. Scepter as soon as he can get the Sobe Mask finish, which is only 300 gold away, and then it's just free kills anytime he catches a hero, basically. Centaur should be able to survive that. Anybody else is a one-shot for the combo. Well, Lena, Lena could get out Radiant's of hand really quickly here. Oh yeah, this is this is looking Radiant like a good game for, for Lena just to keep finding kills. He'll see if Fnatic trying to defend this, but they... Look who's getting charged. Yeah, they <laughs> Again. Can't. It's poor KYXY. He's found Top so little this game. Just the 43 CS and... And they're leaving him and they don't have a song. Stampede's on cooldown. KYXY's gonna blink out. Ah, does March still want it? Oh, he oh. did, but he's not gonna go for Maybe it. Maybe scared him a little too much with that decay and the gyrocopter's positioning, but... Centaur has a blink now. This is this a is very good timing. Item. This yeah. is the item to get them back in the game. So, I have to see just a bit more refinement coming out from Fnatic with their ganks. They've gone for smoke ganks that have failed, Queen of Pain TP rotations, Radiant's which have completely backfired. They have to be very careful about what kind of kills they go for. Another charge. March again on the move. Johnny not level 6 yet. He gets hit once. There's the Nether Strike follow up. Comes through from Nuts. Who could drop the tombstone under the tower if he really needs to. He does commit it. And they'll get the Johnny kill again. Four heroes dogpiling. Meanwhile, QO also on the run. Has the Yule Scepter. Continues to sprint his way out of here. And the charge is coming. This could end horribly for Fnatic Kachika, but doesn't cancel it. Then they look good at Kachika. He doesn't get a single spell up. Debbie's next. The Yule set up on the Shadow Fiend. Where's the follow up? The two hero stun comes out from QO and he starts laying into them with auto attack. So slave as well. March takes through it. Finally, KYXY will bring him down. But this Spirit Breaker of March just keeps on delivering every single kill. It feels like he's been the key hero in it. One, three, and seven. He's died a lot, but he's really given his team the space they need. Yeah. These deep wards just allow him to charge from so far away. You see hero like moving out towards mid lane, towards top lane. You can charge him constantly. You've got the vision. This mid ward between the T1 and T2 was just pinged out, so maybe Fnatic know where it is as Ketchik is headed that direction, but these wards have already paid for themselves, especially this mid lane one. Continue to work on this tower mid, and they really want to fight it. No call down for a bit. Queen of Pain jumping in with the ultimate. Can't quite finish. Kuo gets grave. Slave the other way. The last auto attack finishes him again. Like you said, cause a disastrous game for KYXY. Kuo will finally fall to the double edge of Ohio. It's a big commitment. Now the call down's cool down. It's a bit of an air ball, but they're still hunting onto Mushi. They nether strike him back into four. Wow. He falls again, and Kua Base Rush is just ruining Fnatic. Yeah, Kua could have even lived there. If he, he should have used the Radiant's center instead of himself, but I, obviously you're kind of just like making a split-second decision there, but even so, a great win for MVP. Just constant fighting with Gyrocop, the Spirit Breaker, and dying oh, also in his Ohio, prime. looking for the combo plays. He gets the Blink Stun initiation. They're going to follow up here with the song. Nuts has no tombstone for 10 seconds or so when the song wears off. They grave KP, though, and they're going to try to hang on to him a bit longer. They've got one more heal and a weave available. The heal coming out. Soul Rift, as well as the Dazzle heal, but a secondary scream into the trees. TP? No, he's, he's going to turn with the Barrage. KYXY says, where's the team? He's healed again. Where's the help? He gets nothing, and he ends up dying again while Nutch just rampages around the tier 2. KYXY has to be absolutely beside himself yeah. at this point. And Fnatic, it's it's just not, they're completely misplaying everything. Like that was a, a, the sleep into the Impale. The Impale didn't even hit the Gyrocopter there. All they had to do was hit that Gyrocopter Impale. Yeah, he's getting grave, but you needed the damage to get him down to 1 HP, then you just wait out the grave and kill him, but he didn't take the damage, he was like still on 200 HP, he just ran away, kited them back, and got completely back to safety with a few more heals, so... Fnatic, this has just been a, a poor showing from them, and very uncharacteristic, because, I mean, this is the team that beat Secret, the only team to take a game off Secret so far, and just not playing their best Dota right now. Not even close, but this is always the worry with Fnatic, they're, they're not a very consistent team.
And now Kichi Kimba no on a warning mission. No, that's that's not happening. MVP will not, not allow D Ford. Well, why is the it's, lion there by himself? Yeah, yeah. I, well, they they know who was going to plant it. Well, whether they saw it they, planted or not. They actually runs. tried to D Ward it. It looks like Sentry got planted around the same time. Might have been right before, but uh, either way, doesn't quite easy do. rush. With this one, MVP may be looking for high ground. And... Middle tower is under attack. Well, while we have a moment here to breathe, Rashawn I guess the question is, what's the game plan for Fnatic? You are up against Dyer. Spirit Breaker and a Yule's um, Lena. You can't Dyer's really split push that easily. Right. Fnatic still have a very strong hero composition. Uh, the Centaur, Shadow Fiend, Queen of Pain just cause works really nicely. Their team fight set up from a Naga Siren, scary. You've got great burst damage coming out of the line, so it thinks and still works, and they're going to find a freebie here. Kill the Tombstone is enough to keep March alive. They commit everything. They do get him. Trying to focus the Tombstone down. Mushi is. Is there any more backup coming? He correctly identifies there's not. He gets the Tombstone, and he keeps on moving forward. Yeah. Tomb uh, gets denied. The charge che little cheeky little play from, from Nuts, but... All right, but with no tomb up, they may push this. Yeah, and this, it's Fnatic, it's all going to come down yeah, to just how they maneuver around the map. Play, make kind of defensive kind of bait your teammates like they just did there with Mushi. They show him top, they sit behind them, use them as bait, and then they get a team oh, on who's got the Yule Scepter, the two-hero stun could come out. No, QO just goes with the immediate Laguna anyway, but it does cost his undying his life as Ohio squirms into the trees. He's got a blink available one second, and he can TP out if he needs to. Oh, stun barely looked like it actually hit him, but somehow gets the blink off. Just on the edge, I guess. Well, he makes it out. Ohio has been... Hanging on to this game for his team, 3-1-3. and three, Finding some decent openings. Seems like it's going to continue to be up to him to, to give his team space. And so now he gets an item to help save his buddies. The fourth staff comes out. So often he's been the bulwark, just the, the stable player that doesn't make mistakes, who allows Fnatic to, to come back and, and to pull ahead when they're in a relatively close game. Yeah, if they can get Mushi up to, to BKB on Shadowfiend and continue to farm the Queen of Pain as well, it looks like a Yule Scepter is going to be the entries for KYXY, which is kind of handy. If you get thrown up in the air by Alina, you can Yule's as you hit the ground to dodge the stun and maybe keep yourself alive against the combo, although it's it's always kind of some mind games. Alina may just like fake, fake stun out of it and wait for you to use Yule's yourself, but it's just a cheap, good, cost-effective item when you're this far behind. Queen of Pain struggling so much. Sixth on net, net worth. KYXY, just a reminder, was the safe lane farmer for Fnatic. Yeah, I guess we see the power of the Spirit Breaker undying dual lane. Just <laughs> uh, there were a couple times where I popped the camera down bottom in the first couple minutes, and you'd see a decay come out, one auto attack, and he blinks away, and he's lost like a third of his health almost instantly. Just so difficult to fight against the zombie early on. Also, the Yules, and probably Dyer's even more importantly, really good against attack. charge until a BKB is purchased, which are just gonna have ways to go before he grabs. Do I shadow blade through the mid lane? It gets seen by a sentry ward, so this won't lead to too much. But and now he's he is working towards eggs. That is the worry for Mushi. You you get your BKB, but Duo able to dish out 675 pure damage right through it. That is a half Mushi's HP pool, and he actually opted for Yasha first. So okay, he's going to delay so that BKB a bit. Go into the SMY. Some HP and stats Dyer's out of this. I assume he's not going for a Manta style, but never really, never really know with Mushi. That goes for some slightly different item builds from time to time. QO. There's the charge. Yeah, it gets they're all, they're all rushing in. March you is going to lead the way. Me. They've got a cooldown available. QO commits. He doesn't get stunned oh, because the charge ends up hitting Ohio when he blinked him. But QO graves at the final hour. What a oh. sick play from. Debbie saves him, and now they look for Mushi as well. A follow-up slave, he still has the Aegis, and he's gonna survive through all this. KP now surging forward, back up at his side. They get the Yules off stun at the ready. If they chain it right, and they will, it's the death of KYXY. Three crushed, and MVP flexing as they move down mid. I mean, that was just so unfortunate for for poor, Ohio poor there. Centaur. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Like you think you've got the initiation, you blink into a charge. Oh, that's rough. If he gets the if he gets the blink stun, Rain Lena dies before the grave fortified. comes out, and it's a very different. Play. Yeah, and even though Lena has an Aegis, maybe it's like more of a 50 50 fight, but. That's kind of a 50-50 fight into an Aegis is what you want when you're in Fnatic's position, when you're behind this much. Like, you take those kind of like 2 for 2, 3 for 3 trades instead. It's a very one-sided fight in MVP's favor. And that Lena Ags grows ever closer. BKB, I mean, still an option here for Mushi. He's bought the Ogre Club, hasn't committed to the Sanjin Yasha just yet, but even if he gets it, 
Uh, it's just the physical damage, not just from the Laguna, but even just from auto attacks. You've got the Shadow Blade and the Max Fiery Soul. Like with a Dazzle Weave and a Medallion, they, you can dish out some serious deeps. And Mach is, he, he can even theoretically become a slight threat as well as far as uh, damage output. He will be going into an Ogre Club, so presumably a BKB himself, but he's got Treads, Drum, so he can attack with decent speed here. And yeah, They don't have a counter for that BKB charge, aside from maybe Song, so nobody else could can join the fight. But that's really it. He will find deep. He's going to find KYXY. He doesn't bother with the Yule Scepter. He gets the kill instantly before Ohio can get there. Ohio quick on the draw, but not quite fast enough. And QO has a regen rune. This is Q to go in. Yule Scepter available. Charge on Ohio as well as a missile. That's going to keep him out of this fight for some time while they continue to work on the tower. They drop the tombstone. Now they have a mech available here as well, along with the weave kicking in. So KP can happily tank this. Already 21 armor and rising. Tower dropping. And no glyph available, and Fnatic in danger here of losing Elena Brax, and with that, may well be on their way to only tying the series one to one. A team in desperate need of a 2-0 sweep, as is MVP, but they're just going to be happy if they can walk away with the ball at this stage. They had vision of Mushi bot the whole time, so they knew this was completely safe to keep on pushing, and I feel like maybe Mushi should have TP back earlier just to impose some fear in MVP, but that's a free melee Rax. Oh, very well executed. Oh, the smoke back us for going in. Maybe. MVP. I like oh, it. they find the oh, off the bat, they find Mushu doesn't have a BKB. A solution for the combo side from the Ohio Fourth step is still caught within the Laguna Blade as well as the song. There's the song. Johnny says, let's reset. But what the follow-up? They have a stun here. Requiem is a time right. It's a very good Requiem with the Queen of Pain ultimate, but the grave. March, the one guy who was very close to dying, and he went in with the ultimate. Brands down Mushi anyway. Epi! What a magician! This guy has had at least four or five fight-changing, and at this point, game-winning graves. He goes from the GOAT when he first joined the team. I think, guys, you remember that Enigma game he had with, like, a total off game. Nobody would give him a break for it, but, man, has he really bounced back over the past couple months and made the plays. Him and March really stepping up here. MVP. They take a game, and unfortunately, for the Southeast Asian Dota fans, overall, this probably hurts their team's it chances hurts of advancing. It hurts both teams. <laughs>